What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the best low profile single slot GPUs that you can pick up right now for your small form factor build. And when I say best, I'm talking about price, performance, and availability. And of course, there are other GPUs on the market that you can modify by adding a third party cooler to. Low profile, single slot design might get you a little better performance but you're gonna spend a lot more than this thing cost. And with this, we don't have to do any kind of modification to it. What we've got is the Yestin RTX 3050 low profile single slot GPU. Obviously, in this video, we're going to be putting this thing to the test, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 30% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $20.40 for a full Windows 11 Pro key. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA. You can get 30% off. I've actually been really excited about this card because basically we don't have to do any kind of modification. It doesn't require any extra power. We've got 6 gigs of GDDR6, and you can take this right out of the box. Throw it in your small form factor build that might only have enough room for a single slot low profile card and game all day with it. So what we've got here is the Yestin Low Profile Single Slot RTX 3050, and I do love the color. It's got 2,304 CUDA cores. They state that the core clock is up to 1,470 megahertz, but I've seen this jump up to around 1,930 without doing any kind of overclocking. Six gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM running at a 96-bit bus. It's got a display port and HDMI. And again, with this, we don't need to add any extra power. This is gonna draw everything from that PCIe slot. And when it comes to pricing, over on Amazon right now, these are 209, but I have seen them for around 185 over on AliExpress. And yeah, for a 3050, that's kind of high, but again, we are working with small form factor parts here. Going with the small form factor build might cost a bit more. You could pick up an A2000 on eBay and an aftermarket low profile cooler, but you're gonna spend around $130 more to put all that together. And the performance gain isn't gonna be that much going from this over to that A2000. Personally, I love the color that Yestin goes with on some of their GPUs here. Now this does have a full aluminum heatsink and a shroud that can be removed. It also comes with a full size bracket and that low profile bracket. And in order to test this, what I'm gonna be using here is the Menace Forum MS-01. This is one of my favorite mini PCs that has a full size PCIe slot internally. Along with that, it's got an Intel i9-13900H, and I believe you can pick up the 12th gen version. They also offer an i5 version over on their website. I've got 32 gigs of RAM installed and a 2 terabyte M.2 SSD. And when the MS-01 was originally released, Menace Forum did show it off with a low-profile A2000, but that was an aftermarket cooler that they used. I've done some testing with one. It does perform really well. I've also tested the RX 6400 in here. But I do think that this RTX 3050 at the price point for a low profile single slot card is kind of where it's going to be with this unit. Got the top cover here. It should slide right on. And you can see where that vent is. It's going to pull that air right in over the cooler on that GPU. Getting right down to it, with the Menace Forum MS-01 here, we've got the i9-13900H. Obviously, very small form factor. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5200. And of course, that low profile RTX 3050, six gigs of VRAM. Few things that I wanted to check out here from Hardware Info. Looks like we do have that GA107325, and I was pretty sure it's a real 3050. I haven't seen many issues from this company, uh, but this is the first one that I tested, so I kind of wanted to get in here and just take a look. So moving down a bit deeper with the video adapter. Yeah, it looks like it is the PCIe. 4.0 version, and the MS-01 actually supports PCIe version 5. Um, our clocks aren't going to be up high right here with this. 96-bit memory interface. It is using Samsung chips here. You know, everything that I'm seeing here definitely looks like an RTX 3050. 
And I also wanted to check out the TGP or the total graphics power. I was wondering if it's a cut down version of the already on the market low profile dual slot RTX 3050. But with everything that I'm seeing here, it isn't. It's just got a low profile cooler because our maximum wattage here up to around 70 watts with this low profile single slot RTX 3050. And the last thing here from Afterburner, power limit up to 100%. We can't go any higher than this. I mean, we don't have any extra power to this card just from PCIe. Temp limit can be changed. We can do some overclocking and we can adjust that fan curve. I'm going to leave this stock for now and see exactly what this thing does. But so far, this thing's been functioning like it should. And the first thing I wanted to show off here were some benchmarks. Checking out 3D Mark Fire Strike, coming in with a total score of 11,877. And I also ran Time Spy here. We've got a total score across the board of 5,439. Our graphics score is right there at 4,974. This is without an overclock. We can take it up a bit if we wanted to. It's not going to win any benchmark awards, but this is coming in higher than any iGPU in the market at the time of making this video. I don't know how long that's going to be true for with uh, what AMD has planned, but these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to check out some real-world gaming. First up, we've got Forza Horizon 5, 1080, high settings, no DLSS, and I knew this was going to handle it just fine. This is one of those very well-optimized games. I've got Afterburner running up in the top left hand corner and you can see that our clocks are well over the advertised. I've seen it go up to around 1860 every once in a while with this game. Like I mentioned, I've seen it go up to around 1930 with some games and the GPU is pulling around 68 watts. Temps on that aren't bad. I mean, they're definitely higher than if we had a much larger desktop, but you got to keep in mind that I've got the cover on the MS-01 right now, and we're using the stock fan curve for this low-profile RTX 3050. Next game we have is Starfield 1080p medium settings, and since we've got a 3000 series card, we can't use NVIDIA's frame gen, but with AMD's FSR frame gen, it does work with this card. And we're seeing averages in the mid 60s in city with Starfield. And if you played this game, you know how hard this can be on your PC. Out in planet exploration, this is up to around 83 on average. Overwatch 2, 1080, Ultra, no scaling, so we're at 100% right now. Not too bad. I was really hoping to hit that 120 on the dot and just keep it locked there. And if you take some of these settings down, you definitely could. But I think this is more than enough for a small form factor unit like this. And if you really wanted to take it up to epic settings, you're going to see an average of around 74. Here's the PC port of Red Dead Redemption 1, 1080p, very high settings, and I didn't think we'd have an issue with this. We're maxed out at 1080 with this game, no problem, and we didn't need to use any kind of scaling. I also wanted to test out Black Myth Wukong, so I'm using the built-in benchmark here. We're at 1080p medium settings, and again, we've got that 3000 series, so we can't use NVIDIA's frame gen, but this does have AMD's frame gen built in. And with the way I've got it set up, had an average of 81 by the end of the benchmark. And the final game I wanted to test here was God of War Ragnarok. 1080 medium, again, using some frame gen. You gotta keep in mind, we've only got an RTX 3050 here with six gigs of VRAM. But for what we've got, the game looks great here with the settings I'm using. And we're seeing an average of 102 FPS out of this one.
The last thing I wanted to talk about here were GPU temps. And remember, I'm in the MS01 with the top cover on. Using the stock fan curve, average 1080p gaming, 74 degrees Celsius. And the max temp that I saw, just kind of peaked out there for a second, was 82 degrees Celsius. From the factory, thermal limit is set at 84, so we didn't throttle this thing, but I'm sure it could happen in some cases, especially if you don't have enough airflow. At least with the MS-01, we've got that vent right there, so it can pull in some fresh air from the top. When it comes down to it, I'm pretty impressed with the performance here, and I know 209 might sound like a lot for an RTX 3050, but given the state of low-profile single-slot cards that are on offer right now out of the box, this could be one of the best choices for a small form factor build. I will have at least one more video coming up. I do want to test this with a lower end CPU. I'm going to put it in something like the Lenovo M90Q with a 7th gen or an 8th gen i7 CPU and see what it does there. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit that like button and think about subscribing so you don't miss the next one. And if you're interested in picking one of these up or learning a little more, I will leave links down below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.